This is an amazing teaching. And prayer of agreement is powerful, friends. As we continue with our series on the ministry of prevailing prayer, and as we continue with this class on corporate prayer or prayer of agreement, I am just being energized. And I feel all this, I, 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 my prayers that all the saints get to understand what we are talking about. Philippians 1.19 For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer. This shall turn to my salvation through your prayer. This is the Apostle Paul. He is asking the saints to pray for him. And he just wants them to really intercede for him. Let me look at, let me read from verse 17 to get the whole meaning. So we are looking at Philippians chapter, chapter 1 and we read from verse 17. Those who preach Christ with ambition and competition are insincere. They just want to add to the hardships of my imprisonment. Yet in spite of all this, I am overjoyed. For what does it matter as long as Christ is being uh, preached? If they preach him with mixed motives or with genuine love, the message of Christ is still being preached. And I continue to rejoice because I know that the, 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 that the lavish supply of the Spirit of Jesus, the Anointed One, and your intercessions for me will bring about my deliverance. No matter what, I will continue to hope and passionately cling to Christ so that he will be openly revealed through me before everyone's eyes. So I will not be ashamed in my life or in my death. Christ will be magnified in me. My true life is the anointed one and dying means gaining more of him. So Paul says that I know your prayers, your intercessions, the Holy Spirit plus your intercessions will bring me deliverance. So when saints, when, when the congregation gather, if you pastor, your leaders, your spiritual leaders are going through issues, you don't have to be talking about it. What you need to do is call each other, call one another, gather together in one house, not to gossip, but to pray. Pray that God will bring the servant of God deliverance that comes from heaven. Today, in the Christendom, if they will see any saint going through difficult times, they will conclude that could be he has committed sin. God is punishing him. They don't understand that persecution can come on anyone. And so people will come up with so many things. Don't join the bandwagon of those who badmouth the men and women of God. I just want to invite you, friend, to pray. The Apostle Paul says, I know the Holy Spirit and I know the intercessions of the saints will bring me deliverance. Is it possible that today, I, I mean, would you today be a person that God will use to bring deliverance to a pastor, to a man of God who is being persecuted, who is suffering from the spirit of competition from others? There are pastors and leaders of the gospel of Jesus Christ who are suffering competition from other leaders. Let, by the way, are you aware that sometimes even we may blame the government for harassing church leaders and it's not the government, it's just some other pastors trying to harass another pastor? Aren't you aware that there is jealousy and there is envy? And Paul says, okay, they, they, there are those who are envious of me and they want to make sure that I continue suffering. But the Holy Spirit and you guys who are praying for me, your prayers will help me be delivered. This is an amazing, amazing reality that we need to understand. It is, let me tell you sometimes, it is easier to fight the heathens than to, to, to fight saints or religious people who are full of jealousy. They persecuted Jesus, by the way. They are the ones who crucified Jesus. 
The Roman, the Roman Empire did not kill Jesus. Jesus was killed by religious people. You remember even the Roman leader said, I don't find anything wrong with this man. And they said, no, let this guy be crucified. He said, on such a day, you, need, you, you always ask for us to release one prisoner. Let me release this Jesus because I don't see anything. They said, no, release that thief, but not Jesus. They said, and he said, but this man hasn't committed any sin. We cannot shed the blood of the innocent. It brings a curse. And they said, let that curse be on us. Let that curse be on our children. It was the religious Jewish people who said those things. Let me tell you, the spirit of religion is the spirit of Antichrist. It's a spirit that is against anyone who is anointed. Religious spirits fight anointed people. And oftentimes when you go to a city and you find that a pa the pastors and other people, they, they are against a particular pastor over something, most likely he is more anointed than they are. And they are threatened by his anointing. So they will come up with all manner of things. But I want to tell you, pastors and leaders who are listening to this broadcast, don't malign your friends. Don't be used of the devil to persecute another pastor, another minister of the gospel. Don't do that. It doesn't help. It doesn't bring glory to God. To the master that man stands, to the master he falls. But the desire of the master is that because he is a servant of God, God will make him stand. So stop judging and intercede for one another. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise and glory because of your love and mercy. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your for the fact that you are ever present to help us. May you be glorified and may you be adored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Spiritual nourishment, click on subscribe button below. Click on the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another video.